like to say good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning Bible class. Brother Joe Cash will be coming before us shortly to give us another message from the book of Philippians. Our song selection before class is going to be No Not One, selection number 47 in our sacred selection, No Not One. Ready? Let us sing. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus singing, no, not one. We're singing, no, not one. None else could heal all our souls. D. Jesus singing, no, not one. We're singing, no, not one. Don't you know that Jesus knows all about our struggle? Telling you that he will guide till the day is up. Well, now there's not a friend like the lowly. Jesus singing, no, not one. We're singing, no. Not one, no friend like him is so high and holy singing, no, not one, we're singing, no, not one, and yet no friend is so meek and lowly singing, no, not one we're singing no not don't you know that jesus knows all about our struggle i'm telling you that he will guide us till the day is done and there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus, we're singing, no, not one. We're singing, no, not one. Let us pray. Our kind, gracious, and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for allowing us to rise and to walk in the newness of life, for health and strength. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us all that we have. Heavenly Father, it's with bowed heads and grateful hearts that we come to your throne and we ask that you would continue to watch over us and guide us. Heavenly Father, right now we're going through some very perilous times and we pray that you would continue to help our hearts and our minds to understand that although things are going on around us, you are in fact in control. Be with those who are sick, those that are afflicted, bereaved, brokenhearted, all those we are duly bound to pray for, but Heavenly Father, especially those of the household of faith. Be with our ministers and our leaders of this land and country. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would give them that most wanted health and strength to continue to preach and teach those things that are both pleasing and acceptable in our sight. Be with those, Heavenly Father, that are currently on the highways and on the byways. We pray that you would give them that traveling grace that they may make it to and from their destination safe and sound. For those that are on their way or those that are on the highways en route to the worship service, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would give them too that, that traveling grace that they need to make it to their destination safely. Heavenly Father, we pray for Brother Cash as he shortly comes before us to present to us the book of Philippians in our class studies. I pray that you would give him a ready recollection of the things that he has studied, that he may present to us the word that we may understand it and also apply it to our everyday lives. Again, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us, guide us, and guard us. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Third verse. There's not an hour that he is not near us singing. No, not one. We're singing. No, not one. No night so dark, but his love can cheer us singing. No, not one we're singing no not one don't you know that jesus knows all about our trouble telling you that he will guide us till the day is done well now there's not a friend like the lord 
Let Jesus singing no, not one. We're singing no, not one. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning Bible study here at the six at uh, the Bestman Twenty Fourth Street Church of Christ, where Christ is King and faith works. We welcome those that are visiting with us online and those that have joined us that could not be here at the building. We encourage you to uh, open your Bibles and study along with us from God's Word. We are continuing our study in the book of Philippians. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers and the impact that you have on the lives of, of, of your children and not only your children but the, the impact that you have in the church and in the lives of others uh, in your community and the people that cross your path. We are grateful for to have strong women and sisters in the kingdom of God to help uh, carry out God's work here on the earth. Uh, very important in their roles uh, to serve God uh, in, in, in this world. We are uh, in Philippians, the third chapter, and one of the things that we uh, kind of talked about uh, in the third chapter is uh, Paul giving up something to gain Christ. He, and one of the things that I think when we all come to Jesus, and I think most people don't think of it or about it, is that you have to count the cost, what it may cost you to, uh, to serve God and serve Jesus Christ. And so... Paul gave up everything. He had changed, has changed one life for another life. And I think that's very important for all of us to know that when we obey the gospel, we exchange one life for another life. And we uh, lose those things that we had counted for gain and we count those things for loss. And Paul's attainment, uh, he left all those things behind. And so the main thing that Paul was concerned about is that if he might attain unto the righteousness uh, of the, unto the resurrection of the dead and verse number 11 and as he talked about those things uh, we see from verses 9 through 14 that uh, Paul speaks of the intensity uh, uh, with which he sought to serve Christ so you have to have to seek God uh, with all that you have in order to attain him. Uh, we can, sometimes we obey the gospel and many people obey the gospel and uh, they don't get any further teaching and they go back out into the world and uh, they don't strengthen themselves. It's one of the things that's imperative for all of us as uh, the challenge becomes greater when we obey the gospel. The devil will pursue us uh, with intensity and uh, he will be in hot pursuit trying to get us to fall back into the world. Uh, but Paul is amazing in that he sought to give up everything to pursue Christ. And not only that, but to attain to the resurrection of the dead. And so when we get to verse 12, Paul says uh, not that he had already attained, either were already perfect, but he says, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of. And so Paul is uh, trying to apprehend that which is apprehending him, and that is Christ. And so he's pursuing that. And uh, it requires a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of uh, sitting down and reading and searching, trying to understand the word of God. It, it, it requires you a great, great, uh, great amount of time. And so Paul's his encouraging confession is that he had a two-pronged goal, not that he had already attained. You know, sometimes in life, people think they've already attained. Well, I'm, 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 I got baptized. That ought to be good enough, but that's not good enough. Paul said that that thing which had apprehended him, he's also in pursuit of that which apprehended him. And so Paul wanted to apprehend Christ as Christ apprehended him or take hold of Christ as, 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 as Christ had taken hold of him. And so it takes much effort to do that. 
And his desire was to know Christ uh, better than he had already known him. And not only that, uh, he wanted to experience more of Christ's power and of, of the resurrection and, and the fellowship of his suffering. So this tells me that Paul not only have, after having obeyed the gospel, but he wanted a deeper understanding. And then one of the things that most people do not, do not desire, that is to suffer. And that's what Paul wanted to take part of the suffering of Christ. Uh, we want all of the glory that comes with serving Christ, but we don't want to suffer at anything. And that's part of our development as children of God and part of our calling is that we must suffer along uh, with Christ. Uh, and so uh, when we look at this, Paul's goal was to grow. And if you uh, obey the gospel, your goal should be to grow. That's what should be one of your main goals. And seek every way to grow. You'll make sacrifice uh, fices if you want to grow. Yes, ma'am. And, 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 you know, you may be just be persecuted by even your own family after having obeyed the gospel. I've seen that with people uh, that happen to people we baptize. And that pressure is so steep that they have to go back into the world. They go back to where they came from uh, because of the, uh, the, the persecution that comes from the family. And then you may suffer for Christ's name, just his name, being uh, different, as I say, in the religious world. When you claim to be a member of the body of Christ and you declare that there's only one church based upon what the Bible teaches, then you may suffer persecution for that. People may, like, you can't believe y'all believe that only one church. Well, it's not that we believe that. It's based upon what the Bible teaches. And so we're not trying to be argumentative about anything when it comes to salvation or the word of God. It's just we teach what the word of God says. And... Uh, uh, in, in debates, in, in, uh, in anything, uh, we teach the same thing. I have, over all these years, I've been teaching the word of God. And I teach people about salvation. I have taught the same thing. It doesn't change. The message doesn't change. There's no new way. There may be a new way to approach, but the message does not change. And do we offend people by the truth? Sometimes people are offended by the truth, but it's not intentional to offend people. So we teach the gospel out of love, but from that, you may get persecution. You may be the only one in the room talking about or against going opposite of what most people believe religiously. And you're going to be... Hey, you, you, do you believe what Joe believe? Do you believe what Sister Diane believe? Do you believe what Sister Prince believe? No, no, no. You, you remember now, you're that individual there. So we should seek to grow grace and in, in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. That's important of, of it all. It, 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 no matter what your beliefs are, seek to make God's word your belief. That's the bottom line. And no matter what somebody has taught you in the past, discover what the Bible really says. And I think that's important in our growth. And that's what Paul, now you think about this. Paul was somebody in the Jews' religion. Oh no, he, he wasn't just some afterthought or, or some person that was low on the pole. Paul was high on the pole. Why do you think God wanted to use him? He, he wanted to use him because he knew what kind of man that Paul was and he knew Paul had this uh, this zeal to do God's work, but it was according to the righteousness of the law. But now Paul has taken that same zeal and pursued Jesus Christ with that same zeal. And then he looks back on his life and he says, all that I had attained, it don't mean anything. Because I'm going to exchange those worldly attainments for spiritual attainments. And that's what we all should be seeking, trying to seek those things which are spiritual. And, 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 and from time to time, uh, some things come to mind 
uh, uh, and a thought. You're like, man, let me pull the Bible out. Just do some reading and some research. Not just you want to tell somebody about something, but for your own personal knowledge. Pick the Bible up and read it and, and, and gain some knowledge. And, and not only that, some scriptures make you want to rest, run and certain, do more and more research so you can get a deeper understanding. Because you're going to be able to help somebody with this knowledge and this wisdom that you receive over time. So, it, it, you know, people may not obey the gospel today or tomorrow, but down the road, when the seed has been planted, somebody may come along and water that seed and they, get, and they obey the gospel. Paul said, I planted, uh, when Paulus planted, I, uh, 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 that I watered and God gave the increase. That's what's important, that we plant the seed, the word of God. That's our duty. That's our obligation. And Paul had no problem doing that. But notice the thing that he did. He wanted to experience the power of God's resurrection. And that begins with us when we are resurrected through baptism. When we come up out of that water, we, are, we, we, we symbolically die in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We come up to walk in a new life. That's important. And then when we look a little bit further, if we, when we come out of that water, that's, the second, that's when the second teaching begins. Remember in Matthew 28 and, and verse 19, he told the apostles to go and teach and baptize all nations. Now, that doesn't mean every nation will be baptized, but all those that believe the word would receive it, just like they did on Pentecost, and were baptized. And then, not only that, he says, teach them whatsoever I have commanded you. So you have an, an, an initial teaching, and you have the teaching after the teaching what is done to teach you how to be saved. So you have the growth part, and that's, that's important. I don't know about you all. When I first got baptized, there was no growth part for me. Anybody? And what, what I mean by that is no one set me down to teach me further about uh, even uh, before baptism, nobody even really taught us about baptism or the purpose of it, why we should be baptized. We, I got baptized at the age of 14. And that was because that's what we were supposed to do in the church. Got, get baptized at the age of 14. I was raised up in the church of Christ. And so it, was until, it wasn't until I was about 23 years old that I began to understand and study the word of God so that I could grow. And, and so that's, that's, that's when God began to, you began to exchange, like Paul did, one life for the other life. Now, as you grow, growth means that you're going to have to make some changes. And that's what Paul did. And so Paul, he was going to suffer many things for the namesake of Christ. He was going to be a vessel and, 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 and that same energy that he had in, in, in serving God uh, under Judaism, he's going to take that same energy and he's going to pursue Christ. And not only that, uh, he was to grow and, 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 and not to attain phys physical things. Now, there's nothing wrong with having physical things. Uh, if you're going to provide for yourself, you got to have a job. You got to go to work. You got to have a place to live. You got to have a car. You got to, all these things. But you must set those things apart and separate from your spiritual life. Yeah, those things are important, but they're not as important as your spiritual life. What you own does not really matter. One thing, we can be sure everything stays on the earth. Because that scripture in Psalms 51, when he talks about the earth is the Lord, and, 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 and everything therein belongs to him. Everything. So that's why we don't take anything from the, from the earth when we die. Because it all belongs to the Lord. Now we're going to either leave it here as an inheritance. Or we're going to leave it in the government take it. So when we look at this, Paul says, not that, that, that is if I was already perfect. That is, Paul had not met his goal as to complete himself. The word perfection here, keep this in mind, because there are some that believe, uh, as Jesus said, be ye perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. Some believe 
that we are perfect. But no, no. The Bible teaches totally different. The word, com, the word com, uh, uh, perfect means to be complete, to mature. And so we are growing. It's a process. And you will never attain that level of perfection because there was only one who walked the earth that, that, that had that kind of perfection. And who was that? It was Jesus. So, but we can be more like Jesus. And as we develop ourselves and, and, and as we look down further into chapter 12, we'll see Paul is, is, is going to hold up others as examples, not only himself, but others. It's like, it's always good to imitate somebody, isn't it? Do as they do, as, and not as they say. As one develops, we should surround ourselves with people that's complete or mature. That's what the church, everybody in the church should surround themselves or attach themselves to someone who has grown and could be an example unto them in the kingdom of God. Yeah. And that's why we should be careful how we live as, uh, uh, as those that have matured in the Lord uh, because somebody is watching you. Somebody's watching all of us. And, and you don't know when you, you've been an example or not. There are people come up this, and they can tell you about things and say, that, and I, well, that's good. I, I didn't know. I, didn't, I don't remember all that. But I'm good I had an impact on your life. Thank God for that. So it's the lifestyle that we live. And this is what Paul is going to share with us as we go down into this. Now, one thing Paul had done, Christ had done for Paul, he had taken hold of him. And Jesus uh, had taken hold of Paul to make him a chosen vessel. You remember he told Ananias? Ananias was afraid. He said, no, Lord, I heard about that man. He's done much things to harm the church. He said, I heard about that man. But, but he said, go, no, he's a chosen vessel for me. Go and, 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 and talk to him. You're going to tell him what he needs to do for salvation. And that's exactly what he did. And so Christ took hold of Paul uh, in order to give him salvation. And Paul told this everywhere he went. He rehearsed it over and over and over again. So this tells me that the message doesn't change. So if Paul told the same thing uh, that he did to get sa saved, why can't we just tell the same thing that we did to get saved? But now it has to be, ba it has to be based up on what God said. And how God said it must be done. But not only that, he was going to bring about his eternal salvation. And, and that's one thing God did for Paul by uh, transforming. We see a transformed life in Paul. Paul was one way, and then he became another way. Now, one thing I love about Paul, he did not allow people to hold his past against him. He says, forgetting those things. That were behind. And so he got to move forward. But you know what the devil do? He keep reminding us about those things in the past. How many keep re uh, uh, repenting for the same sin? And you stop doing it. How, how many? People ask God, think about, oh, Lord, I, Lord, I wish I had, forgive me, Lord. Paul said forgetting those things. He now living a sacrificial life, life different from the lifestyle that he that he that he did. And but but you know what? Paul wrote about those things. He was thankful to God that he counted him faithful, put him him in the ministry, and he tells us what kind of person he was. He took joy. The word injury. He said he was an injurious person, and that is he took joy in doing damage to the church. He enjoyed it, and so when we look at verse thirteen. Paul talks about an, 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 an exclusive involvement. One thing I do, forgetting. What do you do, Paul? Forgetting the past. And so if you try to hold on to the past, you may find yourself living a double life. And so Paul, uh, one thing is, is, that is summarized for him to live, and that's one of the things he, he thought to be the best, and to, and, to, and to die is gain. One thing is to live in Christ. One is to die in gain. So you're gaining. If you put Christ on, you're going to gain something. So he's forgetting those things uh, which were behind. His past attainments, his failures, 
uh, his sins, his wrongs. Paul didn't do it, dwell on those things. He often spoke of them, but he didn't just dwell, I'm such a, oh man, I'm such a bad person. Oh, I was such a bad person. Paul took that lifestyle and projected himself forward in serving Jesus Christ. And so he always told that story how he met Jesus. How did you meet Jesus? He told that story over and over and over again. Now he's in pursuant of that which apprehended him. And so when we look at verse 14, he said, brethren, uh, he said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So what Paul is doing? Paul is pressing forward. The prize is heaven. And that's the high calling. It was a call from heaven. God called him. And it's a call to heaven. Look at he Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1. And then we'll look at 1 Peter 5 and, 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 and verse 10. And, and we hear people talking about uh, also uh, the, the, the crown. So the, the crown, uh, the call is a crown also. Watch what he says. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. He says, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So this is a heavenly calling that God, uh, when he called Paul, it was a heavenly calling. When he calls us, it is also a heavenly calling. So when you respond to the gospel remember now that that is a, a response to a heavenly calling because we would we wouldn't know anything about salvation if god had not authored salvation we wouldn't know anything about how to save ourselves but this was god's plan from the foundation of the world before the world was and so uh be, had been spoken into existence so when we look at first peter chapter 5 and verse number 10 remember now this is a heavenly calling uh, when we obey the gospel, it's a calling from God through the gospel of Christ. So Peter says, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, makes you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. And so it's a, it's a high calling. It's a calling of God. It's a heavenly calling. And so when we look at this call that God called Paul, Paul said, I'm just pressing forward toward that goal of that calling. And so that calling, in, in, it, it involves gaining Christ. And so the prize in 2 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 7 and 8, that prize is often called a crown. So we're seeking, we're going to receive a crown of life. Now we talked about this crown of life a little bit earlier, that also that that crown does not, is not waiting for heaven. That's a twofold crown. That crown begins with your obedience to the gospel of Christ. Now you have life eternal. You're not waiting to get to eternity to have life eternal because the church is a part of eternity. Remember where the church came from? It's heavenly. It's a heaven, uh, uh, heavenly uh, church. And so God sent the church from heaven, Jesus Christ. The church is Christ. We are just his body, part of that church. So it's a heavenly calling. And Peter says it's a high calling. So it comes from God. Watch what Paul says. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now watch what he says in verse 8. Because of what he has done, henceforth, he said, from now on, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So, not only will he give it at that day, but all them that love his appearing. So, who love his, who would love his appearing? All those that are in the kingdom would love his appearing. So, it's a crown. The prize is. Then we get down to verse 15 uh, through 16 of Philippians chapter 3. He says, let us therefore... As many, uh, he says, uh, per, be, as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal the, even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. And so Paul, now he continued this thought, while you are pursuing this high calling, 
He says that you are to live up to what you have now attained. What have you now attained? You have attained salvation through Jesus Christ. Now he wants us to live up to that quality of life. Look at page 55 in your, in your book. Uh, page 55 in your lesson plan. And, and we'll talk about just a few of those things here before we move uh, forward. I want to try to complete chapter 3 and uh, we perhaps will get into the next book of Colossians, our next study uh, in the book of Colossians on, on, uh, before this month is out. Because we have, I think we have five Sundays in this month. But anyway, look at uh, page 55 and uh, he talks about perseverance. Now, when you, when you begin to walk with Christ, uh, you got to have to Go through some things. You got to go deep. That's on page 55 in your lesson plan uh, where he talks about pers perseverance. Uh, perseverance comes from uh, the Greek word uh, hupomon, which literally means an abiding under and is defined as a cheerful and hopeful endurance. And it, impl it implies suffering and in not only in, in suffering, but enduring or waiting as a determination of the will and not simply under necessity. Uh, it is more than just a passive quality where one simply sits about patiently enduring hardship, but like a ship anchored in a storm, holding against harsh wind and high waves, tough times will come. So when Paul talks about this, growing, you're going to persevere. You're going to go through some things in order to attain. So, uh, so life itself is a struggle. Yeah, it is. You know, I'll, we would all agree with that. In life, there is a lot of ups and downs. And you may be on a high today, but tomorrow or maybe this afternoon or five minutes from now, there may be a low. We don't know. But that's how life works. We call it life. We say, well, that's just life. But life is full of ups and downs. Life is full of struggles. And then uh, when, we, when we deal with these things, uh, we got to look at it with the right pr perspective, uh, and, and not only that, as we go back to chapter, uh, Philippians chapter 3, and, and look at a few things about this, what Paul deals with here, uh, is that he knew that, uh, Paul knew that in order to be complete, that forgiveness was real. It's, it's real. And, and so, it, you can never be complete if you don't believe God has forgiven you. So you can't walk around with the guilt of sin because Jesus took the guilt of sin away. That's what he did, church. But we have to believe that with a strong sincerity that he took the, what we've done uh, against him. And then you have to have a strong belief system that also that you're still a sinner. Christ took the sin. Because when you, when you look at me and you, you and I, we all are capable of sinning every day. From time to time, from moment to moment, from thought to thought. And so we, we need to move forward trying to understand that God has, 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 has forgiven us and understand that in order for us to grow, it involves great effort. It will not happen by praying. You had to put forth an effort. It would not happen by just attending church. You had to put forth an effort. See, no one can grow for you. And when all of us have been guilty of this, we listen to the preacher. The preacher do all of the studying. And we think like the preacher. Because we listen to the preacher. But what about our own individuality? Our own studying? What about that? Think about that, church. When we think, we think like our minister because we listen to our minister and we don't study beyond that. And so we have to put forth an effort, a real effort, to understand the word of God. Let me just throw an example out here. Sister Linda, they used to think like W. and Christmas, didn't you? Yeah, me too. Because I didn't study the word of God. But when I started studying, I no longer thought like him. 
I thought seeing some things that he was saying was different from the word of God. You understand what I'm saying? Some things that he was saying was different from what I saw in the Bible. So when you start questioning people about stuff like that, then it's almost like you are challenging them. So you have to study for yourself also. It's good to listen to your preacher, your elders, but it's also good to study the word for yourself if you want development, personal growth. And so Paul understood uh, as part of, in order to reach your goal or reach the goal that's set before us, then we must study to attain it. So we have to put real effort. I, I remember wanting to play uh, football. And we were working out spring practice, uh, doing weightlifting and agility drills. And so I was doing this agility drill, and the coach was in there, and we was going back and forth across the bench real fast. I was going, and he was like, whoa, who taught you how to do that? I said, I just know how to do it. And I told him, I want to play first string. I want to play first string, coach. He took me into the coach's office, and I saw my name on that depth chart. Boy, I was behind a guy. And the coach told me, let's see what you do in practice. So I had to put forth an effort. And then when the season started, I was the starter at that position because I put forth the effort. In the military, we had this thing called run, dodge, and jump. Y'all remember that? You remember that, Brother Bell? They might have done away with it when you was in there, but they had the thing called run, dodge, and jump. And because of what I had learned in sports, that thing was easy. I ran in 17 seconds. It was easy because what I had learned that you have to put forth effort. And when I wanted to preach, I learned I had to put forth effort. Yeah, you had to put forth a lot of effort. It doesn't just come up to you people, well, the Lord told me to teach. No, no, the Lord didn't tell you that. He told you to study. And that's what we have to do. And in order to attain that everlasting pride, and, and so we, we have to do what God wants us to do. We have to reach, have to, have to, have to serve in order to attain. Uh, that is study. We have to mature ourselves, and all who are mature should take the kind of view uh, of these things. Like the word mature is the same as the word perfect. Keep that in mind. Complete, mature, perfect. The same word. And, it, and, and, and it's used in verse number 12. Notice he says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, either were already completed. And so when we look at this word, it is used in the sense of one being full grown, mature, having grown out of a state of infancy or a childhood. And that's what we, we should do. Paul, uh, the writer of Hebrew in chapter 5 talks about that. When you ought to be teachers. You need teaching again. Again, the first principles of the doctrine. So we ought to all be developing ourselves as individuals. You want a strong church? How many want a strong congregation here at Bessemer? You know what that requires? All of us digging into the Bible individually. And then you are more apt to take on your own respons personal responsibility toward the word of God. When you study and you see your obligation toward God or toward Christ, then you will do more because you feel it as a personal thing that you have to do because God is not just talking to everybody. He's talking to me. He's talking. He's speaking to me. How many feel like that when you read the Bible, that God is speaking to you directly? So our responsibility increases when we study the Bible and take it personal for ourselves. And so when we look at, uh, finish looking at this, uh, the understanding uh, is uh, if we think that we're going to grow without just sitting up in the building and, and amen in a sermon, nah, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah. We have to make some application. 
we have to live up to our understanding of the word of God. So when you understand, notice verse 16. He said, nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. So in doing so, we have to live up to what we've already attained. What is it that we've attained? We've attained salvation. And we understand that we have to make sacrifices. That's what we've been studying about humility and sacrifices and unity and love and esteeming others better than ourselves. So we have to follow this pattern, what God is teaching. Again, I emphasize that this is to the individual. As he writes to the church, individually we must take out what belongs to us. And so as we understand, we grow. And so uh, we don't keep... Uh, uh, just get the word of God and make nothing move forward in our lives. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and so as we walk, we will, we will be in line with what the, the captain say. The captain of our faith is Jesus. So it, the Bible uses a lot of military terms, but Jesus is the captain of, our, captain of our salvation. So we move in lockstep with the captain. We walk as he commands. And, and not only that, notice in verse 17. He says, brethren, be followers together of me. Watch this now. And mark them which walk as you have, uh, as ye ha have us also for an example, walk like Paul walked. Walk like Jesus walked. Uh, walk like other faithful people in the church has walked. This is what he's saying. You have an example. So church, be, be careful how we live in the church and before the members of the body. Sometimes we have to be even careful how we laugh or joke about things because some people have not moved to that point. Where they can say, hey, uh, that they can do that. So you have to be careful in a lot of things when it, when it, when it comes to dealing with church, with uh, the church. So we need to have a joint participation in obedience. And so Paul encouraged, encouraged us to join with others who have followed Paul's example. Though Paul is not Christ, Paul patterned his life after Christ. And so we should pattern our lives after those that walk after Christ. That's what we should all do. So as we, as we get ready to close our lesson this morning, uh, Paul, there was a pattern of obedience, and he demonstrated this by t telling us about Timothy in verses 19 through 24. And he talks about, uh, in chapter 2, how these people were a pattern. They followed Paul's pattern. And so we are, there are examples that we all should follow. And then he's going to talk about some things about folks. And he said, mark them with walk so as but you have an example. But then he talks about for many walk to whom I have told you often. So he's not talking about Judaizing teachers at this point. He's talking about members of the church that walk contrary to the doctrine of Christ. Who, who, who stir up stuff in the house of God. He said, you watch those kind of folks. They, these kind of folks, they are apostate Christians, even though they are not absent from the body. They're sitting right here in the building amongst the members of Christ, so uh, the church. So we'll talk about this a little bit more on Wednesday night, and we'll finish up chapter 3 and get up into chapter, chapter 4 uh, of, of Philippians. But uh, let us strive to develop ourselves individually as children of God, uh, to know God's word, to involve ourselves in the work of the body of Christ. Uh, if everybody involved was involved, think about this. If one, if all of us could teach one person how to be saved, I mean all of us, then, they're not saying they're going to be obedient, but if we could teach one person, perhaps God would save 15 or 20. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Being responsible in our growth that I'm going to pursue to try to help somebody to know Jesus Christ and him crucified.
Now that's some real attain in there. God bless you. May it keep you. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I am no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can feel at home in this world anymore heavenly father we thank you for allowing us to get another portion of your word father we thank you for the teacher we thank you for his study we thank you for the edification he's given us heavenly father we ask that you help us to apply the teaching that we have received this morning to our daily lives so that we may help somebody else like you have helped us heavenly father please forgive us for all the sins we've committed. In thy son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.